Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. In oneness, we are Abe Del Mar. So this video is going to be a Q&A video. I recently did a part one, part two, and part three of a free energy series talking about harnessing free energy on the earth, um, using the equator, energy portals, Nikola Tesla, um, Tesla machine, even sort of tying it back to Atlantis and Lemuria and how they used free energy and generated free energy that way. Um, if you haven't watched that series yet, go ahead and watch part one, part two, and part three, because in this video, it's going to be more about a Q&A session. Um, in part three, I brought in Nikola Tesla. He wanted to give his two cents in terms of providing information about free energy from his point of view. And I asked um, people in the Facebook group on YouTube um, to ask questions if they wanted to ask Nikola Tesla any questions because he very much wants to provide any insight that he can. And so this video is going to be a Q&A with Nikola Tesla. Um, I've brought through some questions from the Facebook group that I'll be asking. So I'm going to go right into it because there's a lot of questions and a lot of information that came through. Um, everything came through in writing. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and visit my blog. I'll put a link to that below where I've written out the entire transmission. All right, so let's get started with Joni. Joni first asks, what is the best way for us to access our inner tesseract to assist with this new energy, meaning free energy? So I spoke in part three about the tesseract and how we each kind of hold a tesseract in our own minds, in our own hearts, to access sort of moments in time. And what came through? Tesla says that definitely accessing the inner tesseract strongly brings forward open energy of free energy. Because knowledge of free energy is open in the tesseract, strong energy of the tesseract can be accessed through the heart, not through the mind. When you can achieve the feeling state of no time and no space, you can open the tesseract in the heart. Standing in front of you now is space-time like you've never seen before. There are many open portals in the space-time continuum. These portals take you to different moments in time and space. These portals exist in the woven space-time history of your planet and are available to you now because of the collapsing of space and time on your planet. The reason for these portals is to aid in lost knowledge retrieval within you. When Jessica brings forward lost knowledge, she is opening into different portals in this woven fabric of your planet's space-time continuum. She has access to many different portals, moments in time that surround her. They are portals that open up for her when she is able to open them up through her inner lost knowledge retrieval process. Everyone has the ability to access their own portals to their own inner lost knowledge, um, being able to access moments in the woven fabric of space time on your planet. For those who hold valuable knowledge, such as knowledge about free energy, the portals are there waiting to be opened. I asked, so are these portals the inner tesseract that he was talking about? And what came through was yes. The inner tesseract is the ability to sense space and time as no space and no time. Space and time are constructs of your reality. They do not exist outside of your reality. When you are able to end the illusion of space and time, you are able to access your inner tesseract. I then asked, how do we let go of space and time? And what came through was, he said, central to letting go of time and space is understanding oneness in everything. When you can understand what it's like to be the inventor and the invention, the tools and the energy that starts the invention, as well as everything in between. 
when you can understand the connection between past, present, and future, and know that it's all intertwined, then your understanding of oneness is opened. When you can feel all of that, well, then that is when your inner tesseract is opened. Knowing and feeling reside on different levels of consciousness. To dive deeper is to know and feel everything as one and connected in the woven tapestry of energy. The next question is from Luke, and Luke asks, I saw a tesseract in my mind's eye, but it was different, with a circle in the middle instead of a square. It was also not symmetrical. It was warped in a way like it was close to being complete, but not yet. So the tesseract is often um, associated with a square or a cube, um, a cube within a cube, something really weird in terms of that, but um, you can look it up. And what came through was Tesla. He just laughed and he said, most of my life was spent putting things into boxes, making rhyme and reason and comprehending the incomprehensible, much too complicated. The human mind wants to make lemonade out of lemons, but in the non-physical, lemons can be turned into anything that you want. Yes, there are still laws and definitely rules, but for reasons of expanding your mind out of the box that your own minds put you in, we give this example. The Tesseract is not a shape. Many people who have experienced the Tesseract comprehend in their mind shapes within shapes, but in the non-physical, we sense something more like energy. And I had a vision of, if you've ever seen A Wrinkle in Time, the movie, they kind of step through these energy portals, this, um, like the reality around them sort of starts to dissolve and um, just kind of take shape of energy. And that's kind of what I saw. And he says, where you just step through energy, like stepping through a waterfall, it can be a bit disorienting and take a while to adjust to, but it will open into a new moment in time, more like open into a new woven tapestry of energy because there is no time or space. I then asked him if he could explain no space, and he said, surely, on your physical planet, space is getting from one place to another. In the non-physical, there is no getting from one place to another. Open energy can be anywhere in the snap of a finger. Higher oneness energy has no restrictions. However, lower vibrational open energy does have restrictions. Laws of space only apply to physical incarnations. However, there are loopholes for higher dimensional and higher frequency beings. The next question is from Janice, and Janice asks, I'd always felt a tug when I heard or saw Tesla's name from way back, but I did not understand why. I'm not especially a techie, but my crown tingles every time I start thinking about him and the power. And what came through was that it's not Tesla energy, but your own inner energy resonating with the information and knowledge of Tesla. Your crown is open, so it's able to receive the resonance with the information. Your crown is like an antenna, and when you catch a signal, you experience those tingles. <laughs> the next question is from Greg, and he asks, um, he wants to ask Nikola Tesla if he used the New Yorker Hotel as one big Tesla tower or a receiver or, of sorts. And what came through was most definitely not. He said, central to generating energy is not a big building, but a big tower, basically giving, like showing me a big, the, the New Yorker Hotel versus the Tesla tower. And I asked him, could you have used the hotel as a big receiver? 
and what came through was not in the way that I wanted to. The hotel was located in the open energy of a big city, not in the open energy of the earth. There is a reason why the Tesla tower or energy, um, meaning like I saw, like I was shown a vision of the Tesla tower being an open space. So basically there's a reason why the Tesla tower is generated from open areas of earth is what came through. It is dangerous if open and generated around lots of people. The next question is from Christy and Christy asks, um, she wanted to ask about the government and if the government took his files or if he hid them away in a portal to keep out of government's possession. So what came through is Tesla said that the portal does not hide any of my files. The portal is a window into the moments of my life and my work. When I transitioned, I witnessed government officials taking my work. And I had this feeling like he hung around after he transitioned, after he died. And I, so I asked him, you hung around? And he said, yes. I was very attached to my work. I wanted to see what happened to it. And then what came through was a gasp, like, <gasps> he said, I was not happy that officials were hiding parts of my work. I tried to get other people to get my work. Hope was lost in my soul, knowing that my work was hidden from the public. The government took my work and used it in quote unquote selfish ways. They had the opportunity to study it and bring it to the people, but the cost was too high. He then mentioned the film uh, that I mentioned in part three, I want to say. I talked about this film on the History Channel called The Tesla Files. It's not a film, but he refers to it as a film. Um, it's more like a docu-series, a TV show. And um, he says that the film, The Tesla Files, has strong open knowledge of what happened to my work. Opening knowledge of what happened to my work opens conversation about why the government would want to hide my work. Not everything in the film, meaning the Tesla files, the TV show or the TV series, may be true. So he says that not everything in this TV series is true, but it opens conversation about why my work was hidden for all these years. I was not a happy soul upon transitioning because the cost of my life was my work. And when I transitioned, my work amounted to nothing in the eyes of the people that I most wanted to know it. He continues to say, my soul roamed the earth for a long time. I was too attached to my work. I tried getting energy of people to change and release my files, but I did not succeed. He said open files now, meaning that his files are opened now, I guess. I'm not too sure, but only because I tried so hard to open energy of the ascension. The ascension opens people's minds and hearts to opening knowledge. He said, if I could not change minds, I could definitely help to change hearts. Opening hearts opens minds and that opens knowledge. The knowledge of my work being opened in people is energy of everyone who is able to be reached by me. I chose not to reincarnate because I was able to open my knowledge on the planet in another way. By working with people who could receive my knowledge, end the appetite for money, and spread my knowledge throughout the planet. I then asked, um... So you mentioned that when the government took your files, they had the opportunity to study it and bring it to people, but the cost was too high. And I asked him, what was that cost? And he said that the cost of bringing my work to the public was electricity. They were not able to charge for my work because free wireless power was the basis of my work. 
When they realized that they could not make money off of my work, they chose to use my work for other purposes. Why? I'm not so sure, but it's important to know that my technology is open in your society in strong ways. And I asked, what was in the files that the government took? And what came through was technology about open energy not helpful to the planet, meaning that power had definitely a good and a bad side. Like everything, there is a yin and a yang. My energy work opened energy for good and energy for bad. I did not want the bad energy to be exposed to the public, but I needed to record it. He says that the bad was energy used to destroy rather than create free energy for the people. The technology that I held was opened in bad ways in your warring world, mostly in military, but some in public. And then he says, pointed energy is work of Tesla. And I kind of see more like laser type pointed energy. He also says, energy open to starting fire is Tesla's invention. And I just sort of, I saw fires and I like not fires started by your normal things like arson, but fires started from maybe this type of pointed energy. I'm not too sure. He then mentioned Elon Musk. He said the open face of Tesla cars and then Elon Musk came up. Um, The technology was opened not from files of Tesla, but from the open mind, open Tesseract, connecting Elon Musk to the knowledge of Tesla. And what came through was connecting the minds together um, through the inner Tesseract. Um, I guess Elon Musk was able to access the inner Tesseract and connect minds with Tesla in some way. Um, That's the feeling that I got. Uh, Tesla says that we work together in many ways, for we are one. Our knowledge is connected. This is the same for many other individuals on the planet, all working to open my work and knowledge to the people. And then I said, but Tesla cars are so expensive, most people cannot afford it. And he said, yes, I agree. Most luxurious cars. We are working on instant knowledge of Tesla, instant knowledge of electric cars. First, working on luxury, so we can open the minds of very wealthy people on the planet. Wealthy people on the planet have the ability to do much change. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. Elon Musk Tesla cars is not for everyone on the planet right now, but we are working on fine, loaded cars for the future, open to the ease of many people. The next question is from Christy, and Christy asks, is free energy similar to the ether element? Can we generate our own ether or free energy in our own bodies for healing and ascension? What came through is yes, definitely. That is how the body generates electricity from the air, from the open elements, from a directed source of energy, whether that directed source of energy is white light, source energy, open energy, whatever. Um, He says that there is great power in intention. I worked with the elements of earth, open energy in the atmosphere. At the core of everything is nothing. In nothing is ether. Fire is ether. You are definitely able to harness ether Harness nothing and direct it into something through powerful intention. I asked him, do you have any advice for generating our own healing or our own energy for healing? And he said, yes. Open a vortex of energy between you and whatever energy source you choose, whether it's white light, ether, source, whatever. Make the intention to direct the energy through the vortex and into your body. 
you must direct the energy. Energy will flow to wherever you direct it to go. Tesla says that the vortex allows the energy to open within you because it is not easy to open energy within you. Lost energy occurs because the body is not able to open to receiving it. Opening a vortex will open the body to receiving this energy. Opening a vortex is as easy as intending a vortex to open. Your thoughts and intentions are much more powerful than you realize. Much energy is happening and occurring on a level that you cannot see with your eyes. Believe, open, receive. When you are done with the vortex, direct it to leave. Open it only when you need to. The next question is from Jeannie. And Jeannie asks, I'm curious if it's true that Tesla was in communication with Maria Orsic of the Vril Society or if he channeled Vril beings directly, and that's how he came about much of his information. And the first thing that came through was both Abe and Tesla laughing. <laughs> Tesla says, I opened communication directly with Gaia. Of course, at the time I did not know it, but Gaia energy was open within me. I could feel what and how to utilize the energy of Gaia in a way in which I could help the world. He said, Gaia spoke to me as I now speak to others. She opened knowledge within me and ways in which I could access and harness her energy for the greatest good of all. She showed me the yin and the yang of power and how I could be the center of the storm, able to direct energy wherever I wanted it to go. Gaia opened knowledge within me and opened truth within my rocky soul when I died. Gaia told me, or rather reminded me, of the plan of the ascension when I transitioned and was devastated at the unfolding of events surrounding my work. So meaning that when Tesla transitioned, when he died, he was devastated at what was happening to his work. But it was Gaia who told him or reminded him of this whole plan of the ascension. He goes on to say that Gaia allowed me to roam the earth, not inner earth, but outer earth, to help others and open knowledge within others. Gaia is the one behind free energy and offering it to the people and life forms that reside on her. She opened this knowledge because she wanted to open this gift for all. It not only affects humans on the surface, but all life forms on and within her and the atmosphere without her. Everything is connected. All is one. I was simply the conduit to bringing her knowledge to the people. The next question is from Peter, and Peter writes, Hi Jess. He would like to ask about the metal that Tesla spoke about in part three of the free energy series. Um, we spoke about a metal that was used in Atlantis to power their machine that generated power. Peter asks, is it an alloy that we haven't made, a metal we haven't found, or does it come from an alchemy process? Also, does it need to be used for a reason? Thanks, heaps. And Tesla says, thank you for asking the question. He says that the metal used in Atlantis was a joined lost metal. It was created from an alchemic process. The necessity of that metal is no longer relevant in your current society because you have honed other resources that work just as well. He says, a machine to harness strong energy can be made of many different types of materials. There is no one way to make a machine to harness your free energy. There are many different brilliant minds coming together to come up with different ideas to integrate into the best way to harness energy in your society with the materials that you are offered. He says, Mother Nature and Tesla 
are working together closely with people on your planet to come up with the perfect recipe that will best harness the strong energy opening up on your planet in the current day. The energy opened during the time of Atlantis was much different than the energy opening up in your current planet. The energy that was open even during the time of Nikola Tesla was much different than what is opening up on your planet in your current day. Not everything is the same, and energy will continue to shift and change because of the shifting ascension energies. He says, new technologies based upon the foundations of Nikola Tesla's work will arise and move you into the future. The next question was from someone asking, so how are we supposed to incorporate Tesla's research and free energy with the cabal and the Illuminati still killing or imprisoning people working towards this type of free energy society? Shouldn't they be dealt with first, as they seem to be creating lethal issues for those opposing the current failing system? Thank you for your question. So what came through was Tesla said that the cabal is no longer a threat to my work. There is enough people open in mind and heart to move my work forward. It will not be a quick unfolding, but climbing a mountain slow and steady. Hindered thoughts of the Illuminati and the Cabal open hindered realities. There is a reality or a timeline not open to dark energies on the planet, and free energy exists there. And now this is when Abe chimes in, and Abe says, Do not create from what is, but what can be. It is like what we have been telling you about money. How can you get the money in the bank? when there is no money in the bank. You have to first use your emotions to feel like there is money in the bank. Get your vibration to the point where you can feel the abundance before you can see it. And then the abundance and money can begin flowing to you. When you focus on the lack, on the money not being in the bank, the energy of more lack and the energy of not having enough starts flowing more and more to you, and it flows right on into your empty bank account. Use this same method in creating New Earth 5D. Focus on the abundance of New Earth and this new reality. Do not put your energy into focusing on what may be occurring or playing out in your current 3D world. Your current 3D world is the empty bank account. Your 5D world where you are vibrationally moving towards, is your bank account full of abundance and good things. And then I asked if Nikola Tesla wanted to say a final message, and what came through was, yes, of course. He says, rinse with much gratitude for Gaia each night, because she very much loves the life on and within her. She is going through the ascension in this specific way because she wants to take all of you with her. She has opened many portals for the collective to open strong ascension energy. The long, what you feel drawn out process that many of you complain about is necessary. Otherwise, many, if not most of you, would not survive. The plan of ascension is much more intricate than we can imagine with our human minds. When I transitioned, I had no idea the part of the plan that I played. But you all play a part in the finely tuned, soft play of life. In staying connected to Gaia, you stay connected to the shifting energy. When the time comes to embrace new earth, each of you will open gratitude for Gaia. But in shifting to new earth, gratitude for Gaia must be given now. She is opening energy and doing much of the work to ensure that precious life on her is taken with her. She loves you unconditionally, despite the many not lovely things that you may do. She is the mother and you are her children. Open your heart to Gaia and not only will she keep you safe, 
but she will open the knowledge within you that connects you to the many tesseracts of the mind and the heart. She will open knowledge within you that will help facilitate your part in the play. Love for Gaia is love for all. Nikola Tesla is in many bodies on Gaia. Strong energy of oneness and love is in many bodies on Gaia. We work together in the play, and the play is unfolding perfectly. Abe in oneness and Nikola Tesla in gratitude is complete. Thank you so much for submitting your questions for this Q&A with Nikola Tesla and Abe. Um, Again, if you haven't watched part one, part two, part three of Free Energy series, go ahead and watch that. Together in oneness, we are Abe. Oneness and love be with you.